The soul craves beauty, yet our world languishes in ugliness. Why? Ojibwe elder Dr. Art Solomon expresses the yearnings of Canada's Aboriginal peoples, saying, Grandfather, Grandmother, Sacred One, teach us love, compassion, and honor that we may heal the earth and heal each other. In the vocabulary of management, that same yearning would be labeled daring to care, and its reflection would be prime, prime offering leadership that recognizes that the earth and all of civilization are our ultimate client. Such yearning is not limited either to Aboriginal peoples or to Canada. In Hebrew, the goal of each person is expressed as tikkun alam, to repair the world. Surprisingly, at least to my 21st century management perspective, the word for compassion in Hebrew, teferet, is the exact same word as the word for beauty. The invitation to express compassion for the world is the invitation to return the world to beauty. For many of us, that's so alien a concept that it literally startles us. And yet, it's not alien to Prime. It's exactly what calls people to join Prime and what calls Prime to act in the world. In yet another deeply rooted tradition, that of the Greeks, the word for calling and the word for beauty are related. What we are ultimately called to do is to make the world more beautiful. Prime's mission in daring to care about the planet as a whole calls us to return the world to nothing less than beauty. How delightfully subversive. You know, I didn't know when I got this invitation what kind of an organization this was. Way back at the, uh, the um, Business as an Agent of World Benefit Conference, as Nadia just said when it was born, that this organization looks on the surface like a management educators conference. In fact, it's quite subversive. It's profoundly subversive in all the best ways. The soul craves beauty, yet our world languishes in ugliness. Irish philosopher and poet John O'Donohue challenges us not simply to contemplate beauty, but to move into action. Not simply to inspire, but to innovate, implement, and ultimately to have a huge impact on the world. world. Now, O'Donohue says, now, not tomorrow, not after a committee has met for several years, not after the report is out three months from now, now is the time to invoke beauty. Find a way to make beauty necessary. Find a way to make necessity beautiful. So let me extend the first of two invitations to you to return personally to beauty. The first invitation is at a very, very personal level, and the second invitation encompasses the whole world. As we're all, unfortunately, much too aware, having the courage to see reality the way it actually is today, as John O'Donohue would say, now, September 2013, leaves us awash in ugliness, devastated by how much needs to be done if the planet and civilization are to survive. If we are not outraged, it can only be because we're not paying attention. And yet the people in this room are paying attention. And as we pay attention, we can't help but notice the devastation that continues to our environment. We notice 
as we calculate the number of people that senseless violence once again has killed, not each year, but each day. We, are a, we stand agape at the increasing disparity in income, not in one corner of the world, not in several countries of the world, but the increasing income gap worldwide and at the level of most individual countries. We're devastated at, we're devastated at, we're devastated at, the list could go on. The question is, what protects us, the very people who are at the forefront of trying to make the world a better place? What protects us from descending into the same rampant denial that allows so many other people to enwrap themselves in apathy and just not care because it's just too big to deal with? What protects us from being swallowed by anger? What protects us from being swallowed by depression when confronting the enormity of the challenge? the enormity of the ugliness that still remains in the world. Both the anger and depression are completely understandable, but neither is a bit helpful either to us personally or to the world. What's John O'Donohue's response to our predicament? To those of us in this room who are committed to making the world a better place and yet find ourselves at times overwhelmed by the challenge? You can guess. John O'Donohue says, now. Now is the time to invoke beauty. As personal protection and as global strategy. Now, not later, is the time to invoke beauty. So how do we do that? I'd like to invite you to take a few moments to recollect, to literally recollect the images of beauty that surround you and support you in doing what you do and therefore make it possible for you to engage in global change. Take a moment to recollect the moments of beauty that you've experienced in just the last 24 hours. Maybe you want to expand it out to a week. It may be something that you saw, that you heard, that you smelled, that you tasted, or that you touched. It may be a glimpse of the thousand-year-old castle that looks over Lake Bled that you gave yourself the privilege to let your eyes linger over as you came to the festival hall for this very meeting instead of racing on to yet another meeting, yet another responsibility, yet another report, yet another project. It may be an idea that you heard from one of your prime colleagues, or it may be a random act of kindness from a complete stranger. Very motivated, generous people, like the people in this room, often focus so much on what they can do for other people and what they can do for the world that they forget to turn that same care, compassion, and genera generosity towards themselves. So I want you to recollect the beauty, to enwrap yourself in the beauty that's already there. But I want to make that easy because as you think about the beauty of the last 24 hours, the beauty maybe of the last week, I'd like to offer you an accompaniment. And that accompaniment will be offered in the form of the Baroque beauty of Scarlatti's Sonata, of Ravel's, the beauty of Ravel's music in the form of Les Jeux d'eau, played by world-renowned pianist from Australia, Diana Baker, and surrounded by a collection of paintings that were inspired not by the ugliness of the world, by, but by what's most beautiful in the world. The invitation to beauty 
is therefore an invitation to inoculate yourself against the per personal devastation that can come as a consequence of having the courage to have your eyes wide open and notice what's going on in the world. Diana? Singer-songwriter Phil Oakes proclaims, in these ugly times, the only true protest is beauty. Is that not what prime strategies and tactics are about? The only true protest is beauty. The very strategies being discussed at this conference. The aim isn't simply to reduce ugliness. Less bad is never good. It's to invoke beauty, to fix the world, to make the world a more beautiful place. So my second of my two invitations to you to return to beauty is not at the personal level, but at the world level. And I invite you to ask yourself two questions. What is the beauty that you really want for the world? And what is the beauty that you really want to create in the world? And forget for the moment that you may not know how to get from here to your aspiration. That's what the rest of the conference is about. That's what the regional meetings are about. That's what the chapters are about. Now is the moment to let beauty return you to your highest aspirations for the world. What is the beauty you really want to see in the world? What is the beauty you personally really want to bring to the world? That reflection will also be accompanied, um, but this time by Chopin with wonderful Diana playing, with the paintings supporting um, you reimagining the best of what you yearn for in the world. And as you listen to Chopin's Nocturne, I want you to think for a moment about where Chopin was in his life when he wrote this very beautiful Nocturne that you're about to hear. He was on his deathbed, and he certainly had the courage to confront death with beauty. What is the beauty you want to see in the world? What is the beauty you want to bring to the world? Diana?
Our situation today shows that beauty demands for itself at least as much courage as do truth and goodness. Find a way to make beauty necessary. Find a way to make necessity beautiful. As the Ojibwe elders would wish for each of us, may you walk the earth in beauty. Thank you.